Hey guys, today we're going to make Embroidery Gardens Zip and Go Case 2. This is done completely 100% in the hoop and only in one hooping. So what you need is a number three zipper and um, thread to match. The pieces, I can't give you the sizes pieces that uh, you need for this, but in the PDF, she gives you very plain instructions on what size to cut everything. The pieces are lettered A through P. The only piece that I didn't do is O. I didn't put, because this O piece is for the batting. I didn't put batting in mine because I'm going to use vinyl for the outside of mine, and I didn't want it to be so thick we couldn't turn it inside outwards. All right, so uh, you're going to need your 5 by 7 hoop. The PDF says use water savvy or, or violin stabilizer. I thought I had some until I went to go do this video. I do not. So I'm going to use tearaway. But I read through the pattern and I really feel like I can do it with tearaway and get the same results. So I'm going to use tearaway stabilizer. I did on my vinyl pieces, this one here where she says fold it under a certain amount. I did use double-sided tape. Um, oh, and your vinyl that you need for your little ID piece. I hope you can see it's clear. So you need 12 gauge. See, it's kind of thick. You need 12 gauge vinyl for that piece. Anything less than 12 gauge and as your machine uh, sews it, it will perforate it and will pull out. So you want to uh, get at least 12 gauge vinyl. Alright, let's head to the machine. Alright, so I have the design loaded into the machine. And I'm going to run the placement line, which is step number one, right on the stabilizer. Okay, now we're going to take our zipper and you're going to make sure that your zipper pull and your zipper end is completely out of the way. The size zipper that you need is maybe two inches longer than the placement that it gives you here. She suggests taping it down. I'm just going to line it up right here and sew it with my, holding it with my fingers. Lined up as it goes. Just like that. And you can't see because of that piece of stabilizer. I'm sorry. I'll do better. Okay, for this step, step number three, we need pieces A, B, and C. So A is your vinyl, so we're going to take it out of the machine. So piece A is your vinyl, and you want to lay it down inside this square that it did. And then tape it down. And it says tape it on the top and bottom. I'm just going to tape a little bit there, and I'm going to put a little piece right there. Okay. 
Then it says turn it over to the back like this. Take piece B. Right sides down. Um, if it's directional, be mindful that this is the top, but this is the bottom. Lay this down, line it up with the bottom line of the placement line that it did, and tape it down. Okay, so that's on the back of the hoop. I'm going to turn it back over to the front of the hoop where we have this piece taped down. Get piece C. right side down on the bottom line it up right here at the bottom of these lines right here right here and tape it if you need to and it's going to sew a line down there It says flip it over to the back, pull this piece of tape off, this piece of tape off, and finger press this back and tape it down. Making sure that it's nice and straight and smooth. Um, you you want to kind of pull it taut, but you don't want to pull it so that it pulls out of the out of the stitches here. So I just kind of got mine laid over nice and smooth there. And then you're going to flip it over to the front. I hope this final's going to show up. This is, I mean, um, act like it's supposed to. This is the first time I've made this bag. So I hope vinyl is okay for it. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to pull it a little bit taut and tape it down. Okay. That, that is step number three. Okay. Step number four, you need D and E piece. So flip it over to the back, get your D piece, I'm going to put it right side down, put it inside that box, lining up the bottom of my fabric with that stitch line, and I'm going to tape it down. I'm actually going to tape on these sides because it stitches on the other one. So I've got to tape down and it's going to stitch right there. No, don't let me try it. Okay, now flip it over to the front, making sure the back is still good. Take piece E. And I don't think I'm going to tape this down. You want to line it up just like you did the other one with this line right here. Face down. Okay. Put it back in the machine. I'm going to give a little look under and make sure everything's still laying like I want it to. And then we're going to run step number four. didn't sew, so let's do it again. Still not sewing. Let's see what the problem is. I bet my bobbin has come out of the tension, and it has. Make sure everything's still lined up where you want it and start it again. There we go. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing we did on the other side. 
We're going to remove these tape. Fold in that piece down. We're going to finger press the seam. Pull it out where it's nice and flat. And tape it down. So that's what the back of your hoop looks like. Now we're going to do the same thing on the front of the hoop, except I'm going to trim this little string here. <clears throat> we're going to fold this piece down. Because it's vinyl, you kind of got to mush it. And then I'm going to tape that down. And that's what the front of the hoop looks like. And I have undone my thread again. Okay. Okay, for step number five, you need F and G. So take your F piece. Turn it over to the turn it over to the back of the hoop. And if you look, you can see the zipper right here. So we want to line it up with the opposite side and we want to put it face down. And it should line up exactly the pieces of fabric that you have there. And tape it down. So see, it, it meets the ends of the fabric here and I'm going to line up right on that line. Flip it over to the front. I'm going to go ahead and slot it into the machine. Check and make sure everything's straight. Take piece G. And you want this right side down. And again, you want to line it up with the edge of all your fabric. So it lines up here at the bottom of your vinyl, bottom of your fabric here, and the bottom of your fabric there. And it's going to do a line. Now what you're going to do is you're going to do the exact same thing again. You're going to take these two pieces of tape off. Now I'm on the back of the hoop. I flipped it over. I'm going to finger press this seam pretty good till it lays nice and flat. And then tape this down. Okay. So that's what the back of your hoop looks like. Like that. So now I'm going to flip it over to the front of the hoop. I'm going to do the same thing on this. I'm going to take this vinyl. Oh, smush it down. I'm going to take this piece off. And actually reuse it right here. Okay. So that's what the front looks like. Alright, step number six. You need H and I. And these pieces are one of the pieces that she tells you to fold over a certain amount. So we're going to flip to the back of the hoop. I'm going to line up right side down and I'm going to line it up with the top of the fabric right here. And there's a little line, a little little sew line right there. And I'm going to line it up with that. And tape it down. I know, my mama tells me all the time, you use way too much tape, but I would rather be safe than sorry. I don't want anything moving and wiggling on the bottom of my hoop, so I tape it down well. So that's what the back of the hoop looks like. We're going to turn it over to the front of the hoop. We're going to take piece H and do the same thing. So we're going to lay it lined up right across the top here. Like this, and I'm going to hold it. If you don't feel comfortable holding it with your fingers as close to the um, needle, just tape it down. Alright, if you have any remaining tape between your project and your zipper, you want to remove it now. 
I do not. So I'm going to flip it over to the back of the hoop. I'm going to remove these two pieces of tape. And then I'm going to finger press this down. Just like this. And fold it up. And tape it down. Uh, now this is masking tape, so if it is sewn through, it will it will be just fine. It'll just pull right out from under your stitches. So that's what the back of mine looks like. So I'm going to flip it over to the top. And I'm going to do the same thing with the top of my hoop. Except again, I'm going to... I'm going to hold it as it sews with my fingers. didn't catch on the back guys so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this out and I'm gonna readjust my fold just a little bit so that it'll, it will catch more and then tape it down give me just a second and I'll show you what I'm doing just kind of making my fold a little bigger it didn't catch on the front so I know it didn't catch on the back and then when I looked at the back it it was way off so just be very careful okay see now there's my back and see if you can look here you can see my original fold and then I just folded it out just a little bit a little bit more and I'm gonna do the same thing with the front except the front is vinyl so I may have to cut another piece because I put needle holes in it but we will see I'm just taking these out one stitch at a time you want to be very careful when you have vinyl because you can stretch it. I'm trying to take it out for one. And also, where you just perforated it with the needle, you can. Um, let me get Jack. Okay. There we go. Alright, so what I did with this, remember in the, a little bit ago I said I used double sided tape. So I'm going to have to pull this off. It's pretty sticky tape. You can reposition it. Just be careful and not stretch your vinyl best you can. Okay, so I've got that unfolded. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of gauge where I'd like for it to go. And then I'm going to fold it up to there. Yeah, I want it to be there. Okay, so I'm going to come down to this other side. And then in the middle. And clearly I didn't get that straight, so I'm going to just kind of readjust. There we go. Okay, so let's try this again. Making sure the back is still good and straight. 
Put it back in the machine. Okay. Let's start that one over again. So there's the front of the hoop, and this is the back of the hoop. I had a pretty long bobbin string from a while ago. I'm going to chop that off. That's what the back, back looks like. So, step number eight. What step number eight is going to do is it's going to do a top stitching. So it's going to start here, and it's going to come down and around and back up. Actually, it's going to start here and go down and around and back up. So anything that needs adjusting or taping down, do it now. And we're not sewing again. This happens to me sometimes when I use pre-round bobbins and when the bobbin is just about out it keeps pulling out of the tension. So I just have to re-thread it. Okay, so let's start that step again. you didn't cut it. Alright, so this is the back of the hoop and this is what the front of the hoop looks like. So now we need pieces J and K and we're going to do the exact same thing again. We're going to flip it over to the back of the hoop and I'm going to take piece J I'm going to put it right side down and I'm going to line it up with the top of that zipper tape. Kind of center it a little bit. It's a little hard to gauge. And tape it down. On both sides. Okay, so that's what I got. Now flip it over. And now we got this crazy long st string. Everything looks good. So now I'm going to take piece K. And I'm going to put it right side down. And center it right with the top of the zipper tape here. Kind of line everything up. And again, I'm going to hold it with my fingers, but if you want to, taper down. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take these pieces of tape off. 
I'm going to, oh, it didn't give me much room to put my hoop there. I'm going to finger press this down and tape it. And that's what it looks like. And then this is what the front looks like. Sure hope I didn't undo that too much because now my zipper teeth might get caught. We will find out. So then fold this up this way. I'm going to trim this string that's right here. And I'm going to take this down. I'm just going to put it on my lap for just a second, guys. I'm going to shape this down on either side. So just like this. Okay. So what it's saying is to flip your hoop to the back. And where this piece of stabilizer is, if you used um, Vileen, it's saying cut it out. I used tearaway, so I'm going to very carefully start me a hole and just get the stabilizer. I'm not getting the vinyl and clean this window out. I'm going to clean it out pretty good. You don't want any of this showing. So your window is pretty clear. You need to get you some tweezers. Pull it out. Um, if you have violin, just take your scissors and trim it and then take you some warm water on a Q-tip and then just very carefully go around here and dissolve the rest of it. But you want to be very careful and not um, dissolve all of your violin because that's what's holding it into the hoop right now. Okay, so that is it. So while we have it on the back of the hoop, we're going to take piece L. Piece L is another one that she, she told you to fold in half. Okay, so let's see what piece I want showing through my window. Oh, that looks very pretty. But do I want this piece showing through the window? Yeah, I think I want this piece going to show through the window. So... What you need is to line it up at the bottom here with all of your rest of the pieces. And if you'll look, it should overlap your window by about a quarter of an inch. It does not have to be perfect right here, but you want it to be where it doesn't get caught in the top stitching. So line it up with the bottom of your fabric. And because this is going to be on the bottom of the hoop, you want to tape it in. Also, the fold is up here towards the zipper. These are my raw edges down here by where it attaches to the machine. Just smooth everything out and tape it down. Just like that. Okay. Alright, so now what you want to do is take your D lobster swivel lobster clasp and mine is one inch. Take piece M and thread it through with wrong sides together like this. Now you can put this anywhere you want on here. I um I want mine to be right here by the zipper. So I'm going to lay mine down like this and 
I think I want mine to be that long. So if you want it a little longer, move it to the end. If you want it a little shorter, push it out to the end. And I'm going to put mine right there. Also, too, because um, I don't want it jumping around, I'm going to tape my 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 um, hardware down. Okay. Now we're going to take piece in, which is the back of it, and put it back in the machine. Give a peek and make sure everything looks good on the bottom, and then center this over all of it. So just like this and it's going to do a line right here attaching the bottom or backing yeah backing attaching the backing if you were doing the batting you would also lay your piece of batting down right here I'm not doing uh, letter O which is your batting because I'm using vinyl and I feel like it may be a little little thick to turn as it is and now with the vinyl if I use um, batting it would be even worse okay so what you want to do now is you want to un unzip your zipper oh man all right unzip your zipper big tape everything down I've got my zipper about three quarters of the way. It doesn't have to be all the way. You just need enough of room to uh, maneuver around there. I'm gonna take a piece of this tape and tape it up that way. I just wanna make sure everything is down how I want it and flip this back up, okay? Now, we're going to go to the back of the hoop and we're going to take piece P, the very last piece, and we're going to do right sides down and we're going to center it over the hoop. So making sure everything's going to get covered up good, just like this. If you have any extra, let me let me just say, if you have any extra, you kind of want it down at the bottom because that's where it's going to leave our opening so you can turn it. And uh, it's a little easier to turn. Well, really not easier to turn. It's easier to close the turning if, um, if you leave a little extra down towards the bottom here. Okay, so this is what the front of the hoop looks like. This is what the back of our hoop looks like. And now it's going to do the very last step, step number 11. And it's going to come here and it's going to go around and back and forth, I believe. But it's going to close in the bag. That's it. Let's go trim it and turn it inside out. All right, so we can free it from the hoop. Okay. 
you can remove all your tape. Oh, it caught. It caught that. Oh, man. when this happens guys that's why you need to always check look up under your hoop and check and make sure everything's laying like it's supposed to tape it down I did only use two little pieces of tape on this one and this is what happens so what I'm going to do to fix this is I'm going to go to my regular saw machine I'm going to flip it over to this side. I'm going to go to my regular sewing machine and I'm just going to sew that again. And I'll be back. Alright guys, I don't know if you can see, but what I did was I sewed here, turned my corner stopped and I back stitched right there. And then I did the same thing on this side. Just did it with my regular sewing machine. And from this way, this side, you can see where you were supposed to sew it. So that's what I did. So now, if you have a uh, violin, you don't have to do this because as you cut it out, you'll cut the violin out. But I have tear away, so I'm going to tear mine away. Get some scissors that have some backbone to them. And right here where your opening is, you want to cut it at an angle almost right up to your stitches, about a quarter of an inch from your stitches. And then on this side, you want to do the same thing like that. So you have like a little triangle at the bottom. And then just clip around not cutting any of your stitches about a quarter of an inch when I get to the corner I don't know if you can see that right here when I get to the corner I get pretty close to the corner so they're not bulky I want them to turn out really nice but not so close until they will pull out So that's what we have the only two pieces that you need down here are the two lining pieces so you need this piece and this piece the pieces that make up the hole everything else can be cut off So the only two I have left are the two that make up the hole. And then we're going to turn this right side out. Well, it's not too hard to turn with the vinyl. I thought for sure 
the thickness of the vinyl. I used very thin vinyl, by the way. I get mine from My Punk Broidery. And this is the Teal Stardust. Look how beautiful it is, guys. I hope you can see how pretty that is. And it's really thin, so um, I didn't use the batting. I just used the vinyl to give it the structure that it needs. If you're using all cotton, I would definitely use the batting. And then I would also interface with some woven fuse my cotton pieces okay so take your corner uh, chopstick thing go to your corners and you want to make them right right pretty push them out like you want them there we go I'm going to be a little gentle on the corners that I sewed with my regular sewing machine. So this is what it looks like. Got the little pocket here. We got our zipper right here. I'm going to take my clips and I'm going to use this Beacon Fabri-Tac glue that's amazing. And I'm just going to fold these in. Okay, just like this, and I'm going to fold it in past this stitch line so you don't see it. And I'm going to clip it. And then I'm going to straighten everything out and I'm going to bring this side up to match it. So that's what it should look like. And any of these threads that need to be trimmed. Okay. So now I'm going to take my Fabri-Tac glue. Remove one clip. And I'm going to put glue right on them stitch line, that stitch line. A little bit of this goes a long way, guys. So... Just squirt a little bit. If any of it comes out, just kind of wipe it off with your fingers and clip it. Move to the next one. Now you've got options here. You can hand stitch this. You can use some of that hem tape. Or you can just glue it. I really feel like the glue is a more secure way for me. It's quick. It takes about two minutes to dry. And um, I, I just like the way it, it does. So I like to glue my closures. All right. So while that's drying, we're going to move up here to the zipper. If you have violin, if you use the wash away violin, you're going to have to take scissors and cut this out or some hot water and dissolve it out. But you want to cut what you can cut out first because if you dissolve that violin it kind of gets gooey and gunky and you don't want that in your zipper I didn't use violin so I can just pull mine apart and then just pull this stabilizer out and clean our zipper up so any of these placement threads that come out just clip them off And then go down all the way. So you want to get it good and clean so it doesn't get hung in your zipper. Because really nobody's going to see inside the back side of your zipper right there. But you really want to get it where... Excuse me. You want to get it where it doesn't get caught in your zipper. And I have a little thread right here I'm going to cut off as well. There we go. Alright, so I'm going to wait about two minutes and I'll be back. I 
All right, guys, we are dry. So we'll just pull these off. Everything's dry. It's not pulling out. It's not hard. So now we're going to go through the zipper and turn it one more time. There we go. Got a little piece of tape here from where I was holding everything down. I'm going to pull this out. Yeah. There we go. Get up there. And there you have it, guys. Look how cute this is. Now you can take this, if you have cotton fabric, you can take this to the iron and press it. I am going to take mine to the iron and press it, but I'm going to use a pressing cloth and very low heat because I have vinyl. You also want to really protect this piece of vinyl here because this clear will melt quick as me how I know so I would like to thank Benny Martin for suggesting me doing this pattern this video is for you I um I think it is cute and it's really easy just follow step by step like I said, if you use vinyl like me, oh, that's so cute. And then you can take, and then you can take your business card or your ID or whatever and stick it in here. Just like that. That's so cute. I have vinyl, so I'm just having to work on a little bit more. But I will take it and press it. So you've got all kind of room in this, guys. It's pretty pretty large in here for you just to put some cash or throw in the floor. Just to throw some cash in there or um, some cards. Maybe you're returning something to the store. You can just throw the receipt or what have you in there. This is really cute, guys. So this is the back. And this would be really nice if you could embroider something on it. So you would do that before you would put it on. Um, so say you wanted a pretty butterfly or something here. You could embroider it in the middle. And you just kind of have to fussy it. You know, line it up just like you want it. And that would be very pretty. I think this is so cute, guys. So again, thank you, Benny Martin, for suggesting this pattern. I absolutely love it. Alright guys, have a great day. I'll see y'all in the next one.